Hey, well, praise the Lord. I am Bishop Kim Brown. I'm the senior pastor here at the Mount Chesapeake, and I'm the presiding prelate of the Mount Global Fellowship of Churches. I'm so excited today because I have the esteemed honor of bringing men and women of God from across our region that are, in fact, generals in the body of Christ. Now, they are not all the generals, but we know that there is power in numbers, and the Bible makes it clear that when we come together, we join our faith and we come into agreement, he promises to be in the midst. Seven is a number of perfection in the Bible. So today, I've got six generals in the body of Christ that are gonna come together with me and be able to lead all of us in prayer for our region, our state, our nation, and our world. So I'm so excited that today joining me will be Bishop Ann Jimenez of The Rock Church, Bishop Ted Thomas of New Community Church of God in Christ, Bishop B. Courtney Macbeth, my friend from Calvary Revival Church in Norfolk, Bishop L.W. Francisco from the church C3 over on the peninsula, Dr. Dwight Riddick from the Gethsemane Church in Newport News, and Pastor Steve Kelly from the Wave Church right here in Virginia Beach. We trust that you're gonna be blessed as these great men and women of God come together, exhort us, and talk to God on our behalf. We give honor to God who is our Father, to Jesus, our elderly brother, the Holy Ghost, our keeper. I'm Bishop Ted Thomas, prelate of the First Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction of Virginia, general board member of the Church of God in Christ, senior pastor of the New Community Church of God in Christ in Portsmouth, Virginia, and senior pastor of the St. Stephen's Church of God in Christ in Virginia Beach, Virginia. My friend, the Bible tells us men ought to always pray and not faint. We are living in a praying time. We're living in a time that we need to turn to God and seek Him for guidance and direction. I, I, it's my personal feeling that God is calling His people and getting His their attention. This virus that we are faced all over the world, uh, we the moral standards of our society has fallen to the point that God has to do something to get our attention. And I believe that it's through his permissive will uh, that he has allowed uh, uh, this virus to come. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for everything before you, we ask you for anything. First of all, I want to thank you for last night's sleep. It wasn't the sleep of death, but you touched me early this morning and awakened me from my rest. And I thank you for it. I don't take it for granted. I thank you, Lord, for you gave me a reasonable portion of health and strength. And when I awakened the day, I was able to put on my shoes, close myself, brush my teeth without any assistance. I know it may sound trivial to some, but with me, I think it's a blessing that you able me to do this. We thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for your many benefits toward men. Thank you for the food and clothing that you've given us. Now, Lord, uh, we ask that you look on us, look on America, look on the world, and search our hearts if you find anything that shouldn't be taken out and straighten us now. In the name of Jesus, you see it if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. See, then we would hear from heaven, and you'd forgive us of our sin, then you'd heal the land. Our land need healing, Lord. Forgive us for our transgression. Forgive us for our iniquities. Forgive us, Lord, for whatever we have done. In the name of Jesus, give us another opportunity. And I believe, Lord, that we will walk upright before you. Men will do right, God. In the name of Jesus, bind the hand of the enemy. Cast the devil out the wheel. In the name of Jesus, do it for your glory. Let your glory prevail in America. In the name, forgive us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. Our souls say yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. We'll obey your voice. We'll do what you want us to do. We'll live like you want us to live. In the name of Jesus, send the healing angel 
Send him in the room, God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, you said you were wounded for our transgression, bruised our iniquities, that the chastisement of our peace was upon you. And with his stripes, we are healed. We need to be healed in the name of Jesus. Lord, if you do it, we'll give you praise. We'll tell men you did it. And we thank you for what you've done. We thank you, Lord, for even in this, we see your glory. We see you, Lord, even in this, for you have brought us together, given us time to reflect upon ourselves and see ourselves, see our children, see our families. We've been too busy. We're busy going about our own thing. But you told us to stop and wait a minute. And you put us in a place and in a position that we had to come and examine ourselves. So here we are now, Lord, asking you to forgive us and try us again. And we'll live for you. And we're counting it done now. We're claiming the healing. We're claiming deliverance. We're claiming set, being set free now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hello, I'm Bishop Ann Jimenez, and I join my heart and my prayers with those of the other pastors and ministers in the Tidewater area. And I want to offer up a prayer. The Bible says where two or three agree together concerning and touching anything that he's right here in our midst. So let's pray together. Father, in the wonderful, powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come to the throne of grace and mercy for help in time of need. And I pray for the Tidewater area. Oh God, that your hand would be expended to us, that you would be merciful, God, to our family, our friends, this whole area and region. God, that you would let your mercy protect us, send your angels to guard us and protect us. We curse the virus. We curse the invasion of sickness and disease. The Bible says that the law of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. And we curse sin and death that is stalking our land. And we say no more. The end of it must come and it is come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We put a curse on this curse and we say it to crumble and go down. You are defeated in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I bless all the houses of worship in this area. I bless every minister, every believer. And those that don't know you yet, Lord, bring them into a real relationship with you. I pray it all in the powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Psalm 91 says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I love what it says in the New Living Translation, though. It says, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust Him. For He will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. I believe that in the midst of this crisis, that we can still stand on God's Word. And we can know and believe that He remains our shelter and our safety if we put our confidence and our trust in Him. He has already promised us that He will protect us from every Every trap and he will keep us from deadly disease he goes on to say that even though a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand yet it will not come nigh unto you it won't come near you and so I just declare over you today the health of God I declare over you today the safety of God and I want to encourage you to not let fear grip you but to stand in faith knowing that God's gonna work this out bring us through and on the other side will be better than we've ever been before I want you to know that God is still in control, that because He is a sovereign God, that in spite of every attack, in spite of every word, in spite of every obstacle and everything that would create fear, God is still God. He still rules and He still reigns. And so we put our trust in Him. And we know that He will not forsake us and He will not leave us. So be encouraged today. Know that God is with you. Know that you are valuable to God. Know that God doesn't change His mind. He always keeps His word. He never fails to keep His promises. And He's not going to start anything new with you. He's never failed before. He's not going to start now. Today, I want to pray with you and encourage you to keep trusting God. Father, thank you for being with us. 
even during this coronavirus scare, we thank you that while it reaches pandemic proportions, yet our God is still greater. Even though, Lord, we're not able to meet on Sundays in our regular times, we thank you, Lord, that you are greater than just a Sunday service. We thank you, Lord, that you're with us Monday through Sunday, 24 hours a day, every moment of every hour of every day. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. And we speak life and encouragement and strength over your people. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, friends. Remember, it's Christ over every type of infectious disease. He is our Lord, and he's our Savior. Hello, this is Bishop Francisco, overseer of C3 Hampton and all of our affiliate churches. So glad to be able to come and share a word with you today. Uh, during this critical time in history and even during this dispensation. Uh, we've never faced anything like this before, this uh, coronavirus, and it is really challenging not only the fabric of society, but even the fabric of the church. The Lord has really been dealing with me on how do we cope with this as a church? What is the church's answer or response to this particular scenario? And one of the things that I've been really impressed with is the fact that God continually speaks to my heart and tells me to not be afraid. That's the message that I want to communicate to you today. Don't be afraid. I know there are challenging times. I know that there are things, questions are not being answered. But I want to encourage you and share with you, don't be fearful. You know, even Jesus himself in Luke 21, 10 uh, left us with some instructions prior to his ascent back up into heaven. He said during this time, he said, nations will rise against nations and kingdoms will rise against kingdom. He said there will be grave, uh, grave earthquakes and various places, there'll be plagues and famines, and there'll even be great signs from heaven. But this is what God said. He said, when these things begin to take place, straighten yourself, lift up your heads, for your redemption is drawing nigh. I simply wanted to come and share with you today that I believe help is on the way. I believe that we who are the born again believers, we who are the blood washed believers, help is on the way. God has already sent his Holy Spirit to guide, to watch over, to keep us, to lead us in every direction that we should go. I wanna encourage you to use wisdom. I wanna encourage you to uh, follow the laws of the land that uh, are asking us to practice social distancing. I think it's important to do. Uh, but I also believe that our faith in God is gonna sustain us in this moment. And I just wanted to share that word with you today, a word of comfort that as we trust God, we the people of faith, that we can turn the tides of this virus. There's one scripture that I wanna share with you, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, where Jesus said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then I will hear from heaven, and then I will heal their land. I believe God wants to heal our land. He needs you, he needs me, he needs our churches, our congregations, he needs our denominations, he needs the people of God to come together, humble themselves and pray and seek God's face. I believe we are the answer, we are the key that can turn this virus around. I wanna leave you with this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe your word. I believe, God, that you have anointed your people to be able to cry out unto you. And God, you said in your word that if we would humble ourselves and cry out to you, that you would hear our voice. Collectively, Father, in the 757 area and around this nation and even around this globe, we as a people come together to call upon your name because we know that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that he is Lord. So God, I pray right now that in Jesus' name, you would, you would cause this virus to cease 
And not only would you cause it to cease, God, but you would protect your people even as you instructed your people to put the blood over the doorposts and the lentils so that the death angel would pass by. I plead the blood of Jesus over every born again believer and over every household that this virus shall not come nigh your dwelling. And God, for those that may have already had a touch of it, I pray God that you would heal them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. So Father, we trust you today. And as people of God, we come together and we celebrate the amazing work, the miraculous power that flows through the anointing that we can only have through you. Hear our cry today, God, and we give you praise in advance for it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Know you're constantly and continually in my praise. Hi, I'm Pastor Dwight Riddick, pastor of the Gethsemane Baptist Church, known as the Tea Place, here in the city of Newport News, Virginia, 5405 Roanoke Avenue, Newport News. I'm delighted to join in with other pastors and bishops in praying for our nation in this most difficult and needed time. You know, the Bible speaks of King David, who during the time of census decided to count his people. In so doing, David was not relying upon God. He was relying upon David's own strength. God chastised David. One of the things that happened is a pestilence came in the land. Now, I'm not saying that God sent in the pestilence or chastising us, but what I am saying is in the midst of the pestilence that was really known as a contagious virus, David found a solution. And that was the prophet said unto David, build an altar unto God. And that's what I'm doing today as we join in with other bishops and pastors and leaders around our nation and around our world. We are building an altar unto God. The Bible says that when David built the altar and entreated God, that God stayed the hand of the pestilence. And I do believe if there's anything that we need in this season at this time in the world, we need the hand of God to stay this terrible disease. I do believe that God is a healer and a deliverer. And I do believe that when the people of God come together in prayer, that God hears our prayer, that our prayers move heaven, and that God intervenes, and that God can bring a halt to this thing. Won't you join us now in prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks and praise. We acknowledge that you are God and above you there is none other. We thank you that you have given your son Jesus a name that is above every name. Jesus, that name is above coronavirus. And so now we are praying for this entire world. We are praying, oh God, for healing. Healing not just for this disease, but for every disease. We know, God, that you can restore. We know, God, that you can redeem. And God, we know that you can heal heal and so now oh God we come touching and agreeing we come believing and releasing faith for healing thou art the great physician you're the one who has medicine in the hem of your garment we ask now oh God that you would release it among your people and oh God that as you heal us you would draw us closer to you let us come nigh unto you let us worship you and serve you and let us continue to build altars unto you and we thank you now in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, that healing is already on the way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Look for God to do something miraculous in this world, around the globe, but more important, in your life. Hey, I'm Steve Kelly, the senior pastor of Wave Church in Virginia Beach, Virginia. We also have a campus in Norfolk and we have another campus on the south side of Virginia Beach and then beyond that North Carolina, Richmond and as well as Los Angeles. And that obviously means right across our whole nation and around the world right now we're all being affected by COVID-19. And I just want to speak as one of the privileged amazing opportunity that God has given me to be a shepherd in Virginia Beach and in Hampton Roads. I love my fellow pastor friends that are serving as shepherds and overseers to God's people. And we collectively want to be a voice to our family of faith and believers to let you know that 
God is in control, that God is still on the throne. We live in challenging days. We live in unprecedented times. But I believe the Bible says that a brother was born for adversity. It's in these moments that we can shine the most. In Romans 8 verse 28, the Bible says God works good in all things. Matter of fact, I think the actual translation, and we know that all things work together for good for those who love Him and those who are called according to His purposes. Not everything that happens, that happens in life is good, but in it all and through it all, God has an amazing way of working good through it. And I believe that's exactly what's going to be happening in this season. This is a moment for the church to shine. This is a moment for leaders, uh, God's leaders, to be a prophetic voice to this generation. And people, I want to encourage you, a couple of thoughts in Hampton Roads as, as a community of believers um, that number one, and this may shock some of you, but the Bible says in the beginning, God said it is not good for man to be alone. We are experiencing a challenge in our climate, in our culture, and we are being asked and being told that we need to socially distance ourselves from one another. But I wanna to say to you, I believe the Bible says we should comply to those governing authorities. And we should be praying for those in leadership, praying that God will give them wisdom, pray that God will find the cure to this as soon as possible. And yet, I wanna say this to you, when God said it is not good for man to be alone, he was there when he said that. So God himself, who was saying to Adam, I'm not all that you need. Yes, God is all sufficient, but in his all sufficiency, he creates relationships. He said, let us, plural, us, make man in our image, us, our. In other words, God is not singular. He's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, community. And when he said it is not good for man to be alone, God was there. He created us to be in relationship. And in these days where we're unable to gather in our local churches, I want to encourage you to understand that God is not all you need, and that you need community and you need family. And right now that is gonna be expressed through the online community of faith in your local church. Can I say to you, lean in. Whilst there is social distancing, do not allow yourself to be spiritually distancing from your shepherd's voice. You need your leader. The Bible says, remember those who speak the word over you and to imitate their faith and consider the outcome of their way of life and thank God for all the great pastors and preachers and evangelists and great voices that are out there but now more than ever may you be leaning in to your shepherd's voice the Bible says in Acts that they devoted themselves to prayer and to fasting and to their leaders teaching and they met from house to house can I say to you wherever you are at home wherever you are Go online, listen to your pastors, listen to the voice of your shepherds. They will have a message of hope and life and perspective. Let's not just buy into the social distancing, which I want, to, I want you to hear me. We need to do that. But let's not buy into the spiritual distancing. Let's make sure we're leaning in, uh, in our online community as much as we possibly can. And I just want to encourage you, and I'm praying for every single, uh, not just every Christian, but I'm praying for our nation. I'm praying that we will find a cure for this quickly. We'll put an end to this. I'm praying for our economy. And I wanna say this to you, listen to me. I want you to hear this. He is Jehovah Jireh, and He will supply all your needs according to His riches and His glory. Isn't it good to know that God's economics are not linked to the world's economics? that God's provision, I love it in scripture, the Bible tells us that in a famine, God commanded a raven to feed Elijah. Isn't that a great, amazing thought that don't look to the world and its system, but God will be faithful to his people. Let us shine in moments like these. Come on, the Bible says, darkness will cover the earth and even a gross, grosser darkness, but arise and shine for the God will cause his light to shine upon his people. So be encouraged, be of faith, lean in to your church, lean in 
to your shepherd's voice. We will get through this and we'll come out bigger and braver and smarter and wiser. God bless you. We love you. Wave Church is a part of the community of faith and I want to hold up the arms of every pastor in every church, in every city of Hampton Roads and say, God is on the move. The best is yet to come. Well, I believe by faith that today your life was blessed and you will never be the same because of those great ministry gifts. So I'm grateful to God for all of us that were able to come together. And we know that today you've been encouraged. We know that you've got an unusual level of peace and we believe that your faith went to another level. I wanna personally thank each and every one of those pastors, bishops, the elders that came together and showed that we can stand together across denominational lines, across ethnic lines, faith movement lines. I'm so excited that I was able to join my hands together with them and bring us all together so that we can show that the 757 is going to be a place where we'll stand unified. I can't wait until this season is over and we're able to worship together corporately. And I just believe by faith that because of what we've done today, we've manifested a spirit of God's healing power here in the 757. On behalf of all of those pastors that shared, I am Bishop Kim Brown, and I invite you to pray. God, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for the generational blessing through our faith and through our gifts that was just made manifest. We thank you for those who have been generals in the body of Christ for many years. And we thank you for those of us who represent the body of Christ in different corners and different contexts of our region and our state. And so now, God, we lift up the hands of our governor and all those who lead our state. We thank you for their ability to make tough decisions in this season. We thank you for their leadership. We thank you that this moment has caused all of us to come together. And so we acknowledge now that we are greater together than we will ever be divided. For you say in your word that a house that is divided cannot stand. So God, we thank you that today we made a statement. We gave the enemy a black eye as we came together. And so we pray for every church that is planted under the authority of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray for every believer in this state. We pray for those who are affected by this disease and the pandemic. We pray for every person that's been diagnosed with coronavirus and we, we declare that they are healed. We declare that they are healthy. We declare that they are whole. And God, we thank you that even in the midst of all that's going on, we still hold on to our faith. And today we walk in the principle of the word for you have made it clear that wherever two or three of us come together, touching and agreeing, you will be in the midst. So today we've come together. We've joined our faith, we've joined our hearts, and we are touching and agreeing. And we declare that our state is covered, that every household in our state is covered, every child in our state is covered, those that are dealing with health care as a, a first line of defense, our doctors, our nurses, all of those who are keeping our clinics open, our hospitals open, we ask that you would cover them with unusual grace. God, we bless you that in the midst of this season, we still know how to pray. And we look forward with great anticipation to be able to celebrate the victory and display the glory of the kingdom of God. And so we thank you today for an unusual peace according to the scripture that surpasseth all of our understanding. In the name of Jesus, who is our Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to celebrate, serve you today. Once again, we thank God for every pastor, every bishop that served today. And we know we'll be better when this is all over. And as we do right here at the Mount, now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before the throne of God. To the only almighty God be glory and majesty, dominion and power. We together declare that you are blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come and bless when you go.